Hello friends, regards to California where I have so many subscribers. Subscribe if you haven't yet. This is the second part about 1x12 drivetrains. To clear things out, this video is not made for tray riders who don't care about watts. They want to have simpler bike, maybe just less parts bike. Is it simpler? I'm not sure about it. It's for cross country racers and marathon competitive riders. Why is it so? Because you lose power with this kind of technology. The bike I bought for you is perfect because it creates all the problems with the drivetrain I want to share with you. It has all the modern technologies. It's the specialized Epic Comp 2020. Comp 2020. That means progression. Long triangle here. Progression in the head tube. But short chain stays and of course 1 by 12 drivetrain. Let's see the problem. This is the source of the problems for those who want to be efficient and save energy on the climbs. And that's when we put the most watts out. The lowest gears have such a chain line, which is really bad. I, I could not believe that 1 by 12 drivetrains for those who race would be designed like this. Just look at it again. The rear and the front. That steals lots of our power output. And that's because the chain line is set way far off. Just see. This chain is pretty straight on the 8th gear. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's far off from the lowest gears. Now on the 2 by drivetrain, you would have two chain rings at the front, setting the right chain line for lower and the higher gears. On the highest gear, the chain goes a little bit to the right, comparing to the chain ring on the crankset, but it bends much more on the lowest gear. So we have one bend right here, the other right there, and of course two bends on the lower part of the chain. Now we're going to listen how the drive chain sounds on the lowest gear. The chain is totally clean, it's dry. I haven't put just fresh loop on the chain so that you can just think about what happens when it gets dirty or when you're racing a muddy race. This sounds pretty much like a coffee grinder. You see what happens? The chain, it comes from the left side, from the inner side, and it, it doesn't hit the, the teeth exactly. Each teeth has to take it like this and pull it to the outer side. Each such teeth will create friction, and that's where we lose the power. And what makes the matter worse is that we have the narrow white pattern on the one by drive trace, which means that one tooth is narrower, the other is wider, so that it will fit those outer and inner links better because we don't have front derailleur here, right? So we don't want this chain to drop. That's why we have this pattern. But then there is even more friction between the chain and those teeth who are far off the chain line. And this is the place where the chain leaves the teeth on the sprocket, the lowest gear, can you see where the teeth are? They're exactly on the left plates on this chain. So when the chain leaves the cassette, it will beautifully rub against these teeth because they are not in line. Same problem here where the chain leaves the chain ring of your crank so that you can see how far off to the left the chain is. It takes off the coating from these teeth. It is no different on the rear derailleur and its pulleys because uh, the derailleurs now have even to be twisted and bent in order to somehow manage with this crazy chain line. It all stops your crankset, your legs. Even changing the gear from second to first puts a lot of additional pressure on the pedals. But how could this be improved? Because guys, you know me, I'm not just about complaining, I'm about testing and finding the solutions. So, the short chain stays, that's why I said I wanted to have everything modern on this bike. The short chain stays pushes the chain stay to the right. And so, we cannot set this chain ring more inwards. That's why we are actually going further and further away from the lowest gears. Wrong! And I have found a little bit of room for improvement right here. We still have some space here. 
in order to move the cassette outwards. You know, Cannondale asymmetrical rear chain stays, rear triangle, very good design. If we move the cassette outwards that direction, we are a little bit improving the chain line for those lowest gears, right? We cannot simply open up this chain stay more here because we'll be hitting it with our shoe. And so this space here could be used even better. So yeah, there are things that improve our bikes. There are things that we as the customers are actually looking for the manufacturers to, to come up with, to solve some problems. But there is also the marketing, just to come up with new things every now and then, in my feeling, more and more often actually. So the progressive geometry for cross country and marathons with the super short rear end and the one by 12, very extreme drivetrain, not for cross-country racing. That's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.